because that's the ultimate goal, right? To be able to, you know, have you not hold our hands forever, even though that would be fine with me. <laughs> <laughs> did the first free, free flight trip at the end of the training and like he said that's kind of the beginning right you do all the training and you go out for the first time and you're just taking the baby steps and you know going through everything and personally I wasn't still comfortable trying to go out and free fly Opal on my own so I was really looking forward to another trip where we could go and just learn a little bit more see how he did after some of the confidence he built that first time um, but I'm still a little scared of, you know, being with other people who might train different ways or not, not, you know, have the same respect for all the birds. So, um, I'm a little tentative after this trip now though, I think, um, seeing him do so well and still fly and be crazy. <laughs> she just realized Dave's there, I think. She's like, wait a minute. Chris, we're doing Chris, Chris, Chrissy! <laughs> it's alright. I'm right here. You sit on this one? Look at you. Woo! Opal! <laughs> oh! I'm on Cressy's list today. We are pals today. We pals. <laughs> we got Tegan, Opal, Jinxie, Fox. Yeah. And and know he can get back to me and have him come back to me gives me just a little bit more to maybe try and do something on our own because that's the ultimate goal right to be able to you know have you not hold our hands forever even though that would be fine with me <laughs> <laughs> is to do it on our own you know and and hopefully let other people know and educate them so that they can possibly do the same thing opal took off on a flight and was flying around a little bit and then I don't know how long in, a few seconds, uh, Raven came in and started at him and he was like on Opal's tail chasing him around and at one point Opal went into a tree and the Raven kind of circled and then went for the tree and Opal took off and in typical Kalaw <laughs> fashion with his screaming and, and um, acrobatics took off uh, flew around, came kind of back over to where we were, and then did kind of a victory lap after that before he even landed, and that raven stayed in the tree yeah. for like half an hour, and we could hear him calling until like some reinforcements came in like half an hour later. He never moved. Yeah, it was interesting. We just kind of, because uh, the raven did, when he was coming in, got far closer than I thought he was going to, and then Opal did kind of a, a chuck and a jive and an over and a, and towards a tree and the raven just went straight to the tree and opal kept going uh and the raven said i'm done with this i don't know what these pink things are but i don't <laughs> want to try and get one of these and and i felt i figured opal was going to come beeline back to us but came towards us and then 
turn straight on back out over the canyon where the raven has tried to scare him away from and did a little lap going, is this where you didn't want me? All right, here I am. Okay, I'll go back to see mom. And landed yeah. right on her. Papa! Oh, now he's really going to be cocky. <laughs> Oh, look at him! Oh my gosh. He's like, what? You run out of energy? Coco! <laughs> you gotta get some height. Come on! Tom, you can do it! Tom, Tom, you can do it! You can do it! Right here! Right there! Yeah. Oh. Nice! That was spectacular! I think on flight trips, too, having him is beneficial because Opal likes to be with me so much, he won't necessarily leave. I'd get a lot of boomerang flights and just come right back. But if he'll go to Doug, he's fine going to Doug, so he can kind of go off a ways and launch him. And then he's more likely to do some exploratory and just kind of fly around yeah, before sort of, he comes back to me. I'm sort of the human perch, right? Go back to your perch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> My relationship with Opal is different than Rhonda's relationship with Opal. Rhonda, very much whenever Opal's around, it much more often gets into that, that training mode, right? She'll flick into that. And being with me, because I'm not very good at the whole training thing, we're just kind of hanging out together. Um, and between us, it works out pretty well, right? It allows her to to be the the that that focus point, but yet totally comfortable with me. Yeah, and still to the point he'll recall to Doug. Oh yeah. Oh, oh that way. <laughs> My daughter surfs, and so every time they come, they come and like get as many as you can. So we buy them all. Yeah. At the end of the camp, they have them. Um, although we really wanted to get out and fly more, we have not flown since uh, the prompt trip. And so this was awesome because it did, that first trip, like you guys were there kind of holding us up the whole way with everything we do um, because that's, we were first time, we, we had to do that. And we kind of took too much advantage, or I did, that I didn't try enough to put on mounts. I didn't try enough to learn about the GPS, right? I was just out there having a good time. And this time we're taking, because we know we want to get out trying there and fly, we're trying to take more yeah. responsibility and what we need to learn. Uh, allow ourselves with you guys as a backstop in case things go horribly wrong um, to try and be ready to truly go fly on our own. Because as much as we probably could have after the first trip, I, I really wasn't ready. And I think you guys are the ones that suggested too, during the molt, save those feathers so you can practice putting the the mount on without you know the stress of you know i'm gonna rip a feather out of my bird yeah yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah that, that, there's a help. small stress there yes um but yeah i and i mean i don't know it's been a long time since you guys have been first time flyers right but that week that we had every day there were so many new experiences that we were dealing with that the idea of trying to to take more responsibility was just not really there, right? We were just so excited about what was going on that I, I guess I wasn't thinking about, oh shoot, after this week, if I'm gonna fly, I'm not going to have somebody yeah. here to go ahead and help kind of show me when I fail to get that GPS on. That, oh no, you just have to do this or, you know, pivot this one because on this feather it's tipped, you know, 30 degrees this way as opposed to perfectly, that kind of stuff that I wouldn't have known and we would just would have struggled with 
or Rhonda would have struggled with longer getting it on, and I would have slowly but surely <laughs> lost two nubs on my fingers. <laughs> but she was such a rock star by the end of our prom trip. She was having fun. Uh, the dunes were a wonderful place. They had everybody was doing well out there. And when we came back here, we were worried because we hadn't been flying her that maybe she'd be weak, maybe she wouldn't want to go. And that that trip out on Moab and seeing her fly and then seeing her just go crazy with that raven, I, I, I don't know. There may be something that happens that's better than that, but I don't know that I want to deal with the stress level if something's better than that one. Uh, so that's got to be kind of the biggest memory of this one. Yeah, I mean, just seeing him continue in the flight skills and then um, flying with other birds too. So like Momo was here at the that's the true. second part of this trip and the galahs together, man, they're just crazy. And I love seeing them because they just, they call and they squawk and they just do all the acrobatics and just have a great time. And Opal definitely flies more, flies better when there's other birds out there um, doing their own thing. I mean, oftentimes, even if he's just come back and he's even a little bit tired, you know, a bird will take off nearby and he's like, all right, here I go. And I'm sure Galaz will join in. <gasps> oh my God. Okay. Huh? I thought he was looking at oh, okay. oh, 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 There he goes. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you guys ready? Yeah. Ready? One, two, three, go! I mean, even, thing. even now with, with what I feel like we can take him out and do our own flights, I feel like I'm still going to want to try and find somebody else to get the best kind of experience because he just so loves flying with other right. birds. Well, they're flock animals, so, right? So yeah, it, they just... And the winds here were a lot higher, so it was neat to, to see him still be able to navigate the winds. Um, couple times it picked up right at the end of, of today the wind picked up and he took off we were kind of packing up and he really just kind of had to hover and come down to my hand but he did it expertly and it was really cool to see that you know he wouldn't get completely blown away by a big breeze he can he can figure out his way in it yeah because a lot of times you guys talk about how the big birds need that extra wind right. to really fly and I'm like well but obviously that means that the little birds can't fly in it that's not the case, right? Yeah. Uh, Opal can absolutely fly in some of the stronger winds. I mean, it, it affects her a lot, but she learns from it. That's, that's also, every, every single time, that's the thing that is the other great thing. Learning. Is learning, right? Seeing her, there was a gust of wind that caught her today when she flew off, and she must have just shot 40 feet high without her trying to do it. And then to see her just recover from that and flip around and fly back around and, and come back in. It was it was fun to see her learn that new skill, right, that she'd never dealt with before. Yeah. Say hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> that was not a Gala voice. <laughs> you guys want to send them together? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Here's Rachel. Rach? Yeah, she's got it. Okay. okay. Oh, you're over I there. Oh, only the gun line. Oh, okay. Everything. All right, when you guys are ready. One, two, three. Ah. Go! Oh! Come in. Come in. Kona's like, me too. <laughs> Bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Good bird. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Paul has Momo. <laughs> Not enough really? speed on that one. Hey, Dave. 
flow. Wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was wondering if, if you're going to ask about this. So we weren't sure when we started um, in Pahrump, which we wanted to do, and you guys were really awesome to let you let everybody kind of try it out first before they invest in the system and. We really thought we were going to go with GPS because that first day, if, had we not had it, I'd have been terrified, um, more terrified than I was. But so we ended up trying to go with the GPS and we got it and we brought it this trip and we got it put on him. And that first day, he just was not wanting to, I guess galahs are kind of right at that kind of switching point to where it might just be a little bit too heavy. Um, and it has to go on two tail feathers. So when we put it in, you could his tail feathers were split. They could they weren't together with the GPS unit on there, and he just was not liking it. Didn't really want to fly. So we took it off and put on a telemetry unit, and he was fine again. He was just ready to go. So although the the peace of mind of having GPS um, is there, the telemetry is just going to work better for the bird. So um, we're going to switch and try and get better with using the telemetry. Well, and I think because we saw the how GPS worked, right? We, we could see that we could track the bird. We could see how he flew exactly where he is. And quite frankly, just because we know what GPS is, right? Everybody has a phone. They know what GPS is. It, it helps you find exactly where something is. And when you guys talked about telemetry. Um, I took that very much as, you know, probably a more limited range and probably um, far less accurate. You know, you can kind of, oh, he's generally in this area. Uh, my confidence level about how well I could track down where my bird was, was, was lower and because I'd never experienced it and I had experienced the GPS. So of course it's like, well, GPS, like that's just what we're gonna do. Um, but then we were following your guys' story because we were at, got out here a little bit late and you guys had a wonderful, uh, joyous recovery of a bird using telemetry um, to go ahead and track the bird down. And it worked very well and it caused us to talk a little bit more about it and to understand a little bit more how it's working. And I now feel more confident that Range-wise, it's still going to be similar to what we're going to get out of our GPS units because um, we do, even with GPS, we do have to at least get close enough to get a signal from it, just the same way we would have to with telemetry. Um, and knowing that it's not just this top-down view that we have with GPS, um, it is something that we can get very directional with and give us a very good distance. It, it, I'm not as concerned that we won't be able to find, right, that, okay, the bird's somewhere within 100 feet of me, right? It's it's going to get us much closer to that. Yeah, much more accurate. And, and so I'm fine with it. And quite frankly, until GPS units get smaller, I don't think they're going to work for the galahs. Yeah. They're just, they're just a little bit too much to have those two tail feathers kind of pushed apart. Uh, maybe there, somebody's going to come up with another mount or something, and I'll change my mind again, but for right now, I'm more confident with her, with him flying, and I think telemetry yeah. would be fine. In, it, knowing that the GPS units do also provide telemetry makes it so that I probably, even had I trusted telemetry, I probably would have still started off feeling Team GPS, right? Because you get both, but it's just it's just the size it's just not not working out well for for this size bird it just needs to be i don't know maybe a severe is the smallest of birds that fit the gps today yeah, it just depends on the bird too i think probably you know yeah opal i mean we've seen people some of the birds that wouldn't even take telemetry but yeah uh, opal he tolerated seems fine it okay with, our first trip you know the first we didn't yeah. use telemetry till like the last day couple or days. the last couple days yeah. we used the gps the whole time and he did okay but it was it was remarkable to see how much better with just the telemetry yeah right. one of the reasons why gps was so confidence inspiring was we saw how it worked right our bird came back because we had g well okay dave's probably so damn good that he would have found her anyway well that's what he was but, saying he was using you know 
the environment and what he was seeing and where the ravens were to to know where he was before even right. confirming it with the GPS. But most people don't have yeah. that ability. We all know that Dave's a badass, but there you go. <laughs> we aren't all quite Dave yet. But when I grow up. <laughs> so never. <laughs> when I grow up. So I never. <laughs> When we first got out here, I don't know how much you guys know about our first day out here, but we went driving down just random dirt road, right? And it's like, okay, I can see it's kind of heading towards a cliffside, and if I could find something. So we went wandering off in my, my Mazda, very not off-road, two-wheel drive car. Um, and that's probably not the way to go ahead and do it. Uh, but then we did kind of hang out with you guys a little bit, kind of go see some of the different areas. Um, understand a little bit more about how we we need to know which way the winds are blowing so that we understand where we need shelter to to make it so it'll be easier on the birds and um, understanding just kind of the uh, we, we were more cognizant of what trees are around as far as how well we'll be able to see and whether or not we can get a vantage point so although we were not entirely okay we were completely unsuccessful in finding any place that would have worked out for flying the birds um, at, at least we knew, right? Whereas even the difference between that first day when we went out looking um, and I thought I found some places that might work, um, I now realize that probably they weren't right, quite the right places. So it was, Yeah. it's just good to know kind of more what we're looking for and more what we're looking at. And every for. location we go to, we, you know, we understand more. Oh, this is different. It has this, but this is why you chose that. And this is why you chose this location. So every time it's it's learning. Yeah, and that's probably uh, one of the things that will more than likely make it so that you see us around a little bit more <laughs> Aren't often. You lucky? Is that um, <laughs> we look forward to seeing some of the types of places that you guys have scouted out and hearing why you guys scouted them out, right? It's we had no idea why you picked the dunes when we were out at the dunes. I mean, we could kind of tell that we were out in the middle of nowhere. And so if the birds flew off, there's only so far that, there's so far that they would have to go before we couldn't possibly get them back. But that was about all we knew at that point. And in Pahrump, the same sort of thing, you know, out in the other area that we were at, it's okay, so you fly them someplace where there's no people, but it's more than that. And, and each time we go to another place, it's just nice to be able yeah, to see and, and we get that education. There's a lot with the winds too, which I, that's probably my least comfort zone, like knowing which way the winds are coming. And I still have to think about it and be like, okay, as long as the wind's blowing my hair in front of me, that's the way I want to open the land. <laughs> but I have to think about it every time, right? And so that's probably the, the least, you know, my knowledge base is not good there. And it's time for a four wheel drive vehicle. Yeah. yeah. That's that's what we've learned. Yes. When you're looking at some of the clips and videos and it just looks so incredible, it is incredible, but you have to understand the months and months of training and work that went into that. Um, that you did. <laughs> and the knowledge, you know, you can't just, it, and it's not something you're just going to be able to research and learn on your own. You really, um, if you want your bird to be safe and be able to be the best that it can be, you really need to find obviously i think bird tricks but find a trainer like and but you they guys say there say, are places that are cheaper pick so that you know pick a like you always say pick a trainer pick a path you know whatever's going to work with you but pick something that's going to keep your birds safe don't just try and go yeah. out and do it on your own and i there is one thing because again because opal has been a rock star she's been he has been doing so incredibly well um and the first day because we had difficulty with gps and he wasn't quite as ready to fly i did i made a mistake and that was i tried harder than i should have that first day to get him to take some of the bigger flights i probably tried to get him to fly a few more times than i should have i wasn't listening well enough to and i noticed that after the first day because it it was about it got to be a little bit too much about me that day that I wanted to see those flights and I forgot that I wanted to see those flights because I enjoy seeing him go out there and fly 
and if I'm forcing him, he's not enjoying it. And that's not why I'm here. So that's the only thing that I will say that people, if you get, if you get too much in your head about, I need to see my bird do these great big flights. Well, do you need it for you or do you need it for your bird? And I realized that a little bit more this time than I did before.